Hello everyone, welcome to Developing Solutions and in today's video we're going to discuss Legacy Pro L110, which is a developer for black and white film photography or film stocks. L110 is available as a liquid concentrate and it is used to create either a stock solution or a one-shot working solution straight from the concentrate. Also, L110 is a generic equivalent of Kodak HC110. L110 and HC110 do have the same dilutions and development times and both appear to be made by Photosystems Incorporated, a Michigan-based producer of film chemistry. L110 is reported as being easier to pour than Kodak's own HC110, but they also, and this is based on information from PSI's safety data sheets for both HC110 and Legacy Pro L110, appear to have different ratios of the same active ingredients which are used for the film developing. It appears that they are not exactly the same, but that they do appear to perform in the same general way. Now this video is going to focus specifically on the use of Legacy Pro L110, which we're just going to call L110 throughout this video. We are still going to touch on the history of Kodak HC110. As a general statement, making a stock solution from Legacy Pro L110 is going to be better for large developers like a school darkroom or even a photo lab. For home-based film photographers, mixing from concentrate is likely going to be the way that will make your chemistry stretch the longest time. This video is going to focus solely on mixing L110 from concentrate into a one-shot working solution. Now, HC110 dates back to the early 1960s with the first patent filing being in the early 1970s. But the HC110 of today, and this extends to L110, is significantly different chemistry than what was first created. And the L110 today is even different than the historical HC110. So if you have this reminiscent feeling about what HC110 was many, many, many years ago, that stuff's gone. So let's go into some tips now on how to use L110. Lower dilutions appear to increase image acuteness to a point with something around dilution H potentially peaking the acuteness, though this will vary by film. Now that comes from the internet. That does not come from my testing. And when we get to the test shots, we're gonna have nine strips of image to look at. My tests do not back that statement up, so I'm reporting what other people have said. I did not like uh, dilution H. Wait, what dilution H was one plus 150 GH 163. Anyway, we're going to see this in the test images, and I think those results are going to be interesting. Next, according to the Covington Innovations link in the description, HC110 has some interesting uses. Here's a paraphrase of three that I thought were interesting. I have not tried any of these. So apparently, Ansel Adams used dilution G, which is 1 plus 119, as a compensating developer to increase shadow detail without blocking highlights. You can also develop photographic paper in HC110 with dilution A. Personally, uh, and this is my direct experience speaking here, by the way, I have tried HC, well, I have tried Legacy Pro L110 with photo paper and glass negatives at plus 15, plus 31, and plus 47, and the last of those three was painfully slow to develop. HC110 can apparently be turned into a monobath. I do not know if this is true of L110, by the way. The additional chemistry needed may have some toxic vapor risks, so I will not be telling you how to do that in this video. Uh, I personally will never make this chemistry into a monobath, the reason for that is because I like having the use of my lungs. Uh, I once wrote a report for an environmental incident response re relating to a human exposure, multiple people who were exposed to ammonia gas. And um, I got to read what happened to those guys. So thank you, Hard Pass, on going through what those poor dudes suffered. So unless you are a professional chemist with proper safety equipment, this chemistry experiment is worth skipping. Really, unless you know what you are doing, do not turn this into a monobath. Okay, next up, as a fun fact, in 2019, photo engineer, and if you are into analog photography, you probably know who he was, 
indicated that a review of the new HC110 formulation was so different than the old formulation that the new chemistry should be called something else. There's a link in the video's description to that source. And the new stuff has less shelf stability, though the working concentrations would be the same. What this tells us is something very interesting, which is that if it, you want to have a type of result from your film chemistry, there are lots of different ways to skin the cat and different concentrations can yield of different chemicals can yield the same results. So you could theoretically have two or three chemically similar compounds or even more than that, that perform in the exact same way as it relates to the way that the negatives look after development. So a major change in this modern formula of HC110, and this I believe would apply to L110, versus the old formula, I do not believe there was a, an old formula of L110 that was like the old HC110. The old HC110 from way, way back in the day had no water in it, and that made the concentrate shelf stable functionally for eternity. The new formula that is used appears to have water, and that will result in there being an expiration date on your stock concentrate chemistry once the container is opened. Once opened to useless chemistry date, in my experience, is around three months, and that's specific to Legacy Pro L110. A Basically, what will happen is that your bottle of L110 will suddenly turn into a maraca on day 91 after you open it, at least it does with me, and that's caused by the compounds in the chemistry precipitating into crystals and falling out of the concentration, and that completely ruins the chemistry. It doesn't reabsorb it, and all of the active compounds are now solidified at the bottom of your jar. So let's go into how to mix Legacy Pro L110. All of the dilutions we're going to discuss are from concentrate, meaning that if you use these, then you need to bypass the stock solution creation step. We're going to be mixing straight from the concentrate bottles. Now, Kodak 4HC110 provides six official from concentrate dilutions, and we're going to use those for Legacy Pro L110. I, by the way, have major problems with the way that Kodak presents these. Firstly, Kodak presents the concentrations with a letter code instead of just using basic dilution ratios like the rest of the world does. And literally, if there is another chemistry that uses letter codes instead of just the dilution ratios, please let me know what it is because I do not know of it. Secondly, the dilutions on this do not get progressively weaker as the letters increase, and that is very triggering for people who have OCD. I'm just going to leave that out there with that exact tone in my voice. So the six official dilutions from Kodak for HC110, and all of these apply apparently equally well to Legacy Pro L10, are A, B, C, D, E, and F. A is 1 plus 15. B, 1 plus 31, and this does tend to be the most commonly used dilution. C is 1 plus 19. D is 1 plus 39, E is 1 plus 47, and F is 1 plus 79. In addition, there are three unofficial dilutions that I could find that people just have randomly agreed on, and for some reason we're all like, yeah, let's just keep using the lettering system. Anyway, those three are G, which is 1 plus 119 for stand developing, H at 1 plus 63. I is not assigned anywhere that I could find, so we're going to skip ahead to J, which is 1 plus 150, also for stand developing. If this whole way of making a secret code for chemistry dilutions does not also make you mad, well, look. Stop watching this video now because I am not going to be able to get through to you on this. But that said, for my contribution to either ending or advancing the madness of this lettering system, I have decided to invent three new concentrations of my own right now, and we are going to call them the Interobang at 1 plus 24.63, the Schwa, which is 1 plus pi, and the Per symbol, which is 1 plus 5i or 1 plus the square root of negative 25. You can use either one of those because it's the same number. Now, let's go to the performance comparison. So we have three test shots. So I tested nine concentrations, A, B, C, D, E, and F, G, H, and J. So we're going to have three test shots, each of them cut into three strips. 
I apologize for these not being in alphabetical order. I, I do this in the pitch black and I got the strips mixed up on these. So A, B, and C are here with the times along the top and the, the, the concentrations, the letters, and the times. So you can see how one negative exposed exact, this is a single shot, right? So we know that the exposure is even across the negative, and then any variance in the result is based solely on the developer, the concentration, and the developing time. Okay, so here these three are A, B, and C. Honestly, this negative looks pretty good, pretty uniform across the entire image. Uh, there is a little bit of detail, shadow detail that's different in these, but realistically, all three of these are pretty good, but I will get into a detailed analysis in the close-ups of how these perform. The next are D, E, and F. I apologize for getting these backwards, but sometimes that happens. Anyway, this is what these look like. Uh, one of these is a real standout as a terrible concentration option for the for Arrested EDU 100. We're gonna come here next to the three unofficials, which are G, H, and J, and I specifically put J and G next to each other because they were both the stand concentrations, and I wanted those to be next to each other to see if the different dilutions in the stand concentrations yielded different results because the times were also slightly different. In fairness, I did overdevelop the two stands by about five or seven minutes each. I just missed my alarm. So we're going to go here to the first, uh, we're going to expand A, B, and C to the full width of the screen here. And you'll get a little bit of a better look for things like contrast and also for acuteness. Look in the sharp details of the pine tree needles and the leaf branches and the clouds to see how these different concentrations handle sharpness in the image and the uh, contrast in what is really a fairly flatly lit scene of those dense clouds. Going to D, E, and F, you can see, I think, some pretty significant changes in these three versus the previous ones. This set of chemistry really uh, performed much differently than the stronger uh, dilutions of A, B, and C. Going to the three unofficial dilutions, we see a return to these performing very much like the first three did. And for stand developing, uh, dilution G really kind of knocked this image out of the park. Let's zoom in to 100% for A, B, and C on the sky detail. And what we're gonna see is I tested all nine dilutions and these three really delivered pretty much the best results. I'm gonna go granular at the end of this and rank all nine of these concentrations. And I don't think A, B, and C come in first place for a second, third, I think maybe they're three of the top four. Um, but at any rate, for general use, these are all really great options, plus 19, to my eyes has the best overall cloud detail and that's going to be make it really good for flat scenes if you're using flat lighting in your images plus 19 also had very good shadow detail and tonality across the zones in the entire strip of its negative all of these would be good dilutions for legacy pro l110 just as general use going to the same areas of d e and f we can see the plus 39 and plus 47 performed almost as well as plus 15 and plus 19 and plus 31 in terms of cloud detail and sky contrast. And if you wanted to use plus 39 or plus 47 dilutions, you could stretch your chemistry that way and save some money. Plus 79 yielded very muddy, low contrast results with an incredibly thin negative, and plus 79 is not a dilution I will ever personally use again if I can help it. Going to the three unofficials, we have um, the two stand developments and plus 63. Now this set really did surprise me. I was caught off guard by these because all three of these strips were almost exactly the same density. I really did not expect that. I thought plus 119 would come out the most dense and that plus 63 would be in the middle, but they were all spot on exactly the same. So what this proves is that the unofficial dilutions can yield suitable results and as a general rule, it also proves that experimenting with your chemistry can be a good thing that's worth doing. Plus 119 and plus 63 are virtually indistinguishable here, and plus, with the exception that plus 119 
has slightly more grain. Now, you might notice also in these three samples that they're a little bit softer than the ones we've looked at before. These lower dilutions do lose a bit of the overall acuteness in the image. Plus 150 yielded high grain compared to every other sample in this uh, video, and also mediocre detail writ large. Let's take a look at the shadows for A, B, and C here, and what we're going to notice is that plus 19 and plus 15 had the best overall shadow retention, as well as the best details in the mountains, though that's a little bit hard to see in this sample. Uh, plus 31 is a bit muddier than the other two in this sample. And I think when we look at the next three, look at the trees in dilution B, specifically those branches just beyond the top of that rock there at the bottom. And uh, what we see in the next sample is going to be really telling about plus 31. This test makes plus 19 appear to be the ideal concentration for, of L110 for most uses. But at the very end, uh, we'll revisit that, that concept. So looking at D, E, and F, plus 47 has the best contrast across the scene and developed for the shadows very well. Plus 39 outperforms plus 31 in most metrics, and it has especially good shadow detail. If you remember back to plus 31 and those muddy shadows, that is a significant difference. What plus 31 has over plus 39, however, is better sharpness in the needles on the pine trees. Plus 79 is muddy, flat, and underdeveloped. It was, at minimum, not a good pairing with Arista EDU 100. Going to the unofficials, the two stand concentrations delivered indistinguishable results. If you handed me a negative and said they are de developed one or the other, I could not tell you which was which. I would use plus 119 again for stand development simply because it delivers easier to measure concentration dilutions. If you're developing four rolls of 35 millimeter in a 1200 milliliter tank, 119 plus one is 120. 1200 divided by 120 is 10. You need 10 milliliters of L110 to make that stand development. If you're developing in a 600 milliliter tank for two rolls of 35 millimeter film, you need five. If you're developing a single roll, of 35 millimeter film in a one roll tank, you need 300 milliliters. That's 2.5 milliliters. That's just very easy math. And oh, the eight, eight 35 millimeter roll tanks are about 2,400 milliliters of solution. You need 20 milliliters of concentrate. So uh, plus 119 just makes the math very, very simple when using this chemistry. Plus 63 is fine, but there is some, sh but some of the sharpness appears to be lost in the negative. It is better than the previous trees that we saw in terms of sharpness, but the, the shadows are very muddy here. So overall, here's how I would rank the nine concentrations in terms of best to use for Arista EDU 100, looking at the entire strips that they were in. Plus 19 definitely appeared to be the best, and it is the one I would recommend for most uses most of the time. Plus 39 came in a close second, plus 15, a very close third. Honestly, all three of those, really great options, and whichever one you want to use, I think you'll be very happy with most of the time. Plus 15 and plus, uh, I'm sorry, plus 47, plus 31 came in after that. Plus 31's the go-to, and honestly, it's just kind of fair to middling. Plus 119 for stand development was fantastic. Plus 63, 150, and then plus 79 round out the, the nine of these. Plus 79, really should never be used, and plus 150 is just not great because it's much harder to measure. You're going to end up with fractional milliliters that you have to use. It's just a pain in the rear to deal with. So those are my recommendations for Legacy Pro L1110. It's a really good option if you like HC110 and the results that that chemistry delivers, but don't like the Kodak price tag. Yeah. So anyway, thank you for watching and I'll see you in whatever of these videos comes next.